This is how you can color grade your video footage to look like film in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. Once you load up your footage in DaVinci Resolve, head to the color tab on the bottom to get started. DaVinci is a powerful tool for coloring because it gives you so much flexibility to really fine tune the image to your heart's content. However, a disclaimer is that I am no professional colorless. I am doing this entirely as a hobby, and this video is a summary of the things I've learned over the last couple of years while experimenting and watching other YouTube tutorials along the way. Now, I really like DaVinci's coloring system because it kind of reminds me of how Photoshop layers work. Each and every layer in Photoshop affects the layers above it, but not below it. On a similar note, in DaVinci, DaVinci works with nodes and each and every node affects the nodes after it, but not before it, like a Photoshop layer. Let me demonstrate. If I make three nodes over here and change the middle node to be, make the image completely like red, like this, you can already start to see it in the node previews. As you can see, node one, the node that comes before the red node, remains unaffected, whereas node 3 is also reflecting the red that was applied in the second node. Remember, chronological order. Now, that means that node 3 is editing the red footage, and so if I reduce the saturation of the red footage, you can see the whole image gets desaturated. Now, if I disable it, and go to the first node, the first node that is unaffected by the red filter. If I then reduce the saturation of the red in the first node, as you can see, nothing really happens. Nothing really happens because it was only desaturating the red in the image, which is the red jacket. So if I disable the second node, you can see that the red from the red jacket was desaturated and not the whole image like we saw in node 3. And this is because, again, the nodes are being affected in a chronological order. Yes, there are parallel nodes and other nodes that you could add, but this, we're gonna stick to the simplest form of nodes as well. And if you're interested in learning more about parallel nodes, then please do leave a comment down below. Now that we kind of know how nodes work, let's get to the cooking. I use a template called CinePrint 16 by Tom Bowles. It is a template that emulates film and allows you to really fine tune all the details that make video look like film from the color to the grain and the halation. So let's apply it. Now, when you first apply CinePrint 16, your footage might look a little bit crap, but that's okay. And we'll get to that in a bit. Before we fix the footage and make it look less crap, I wanted to break down what CinePrint does. Tom Bowles provides a very detailed PDF of everything you need to know about CinePrint, but for this video, I'm going to break down the things that I use the most, and hopefully it will help you as well, because these are the things that I wish I knew when I first got and started using CinePrint. When you load up the template for the first time, you can see that the template is split up into two halves, the top half and the bottom half. I like to compare this to cooking, where the top half is more of like the ingredient prep, chopping up the onions, the garlic, before you start cooking, and the bottom half is when you actually do the cooking. And there's also a little bit of sauce that you add towards the end. So now when you're preparing the ingredients, how does that apply to film and video? Well, you need to make sure that the footage is properly exposed, has the right white balance, and so on. And you could change that using these nodes. And the bottom half is more of the creative stuff, the colors, the look, and the final sauce. And it really makes things look like film. So let's fix this footage. So the first step when using CinePrint is to go to the CST node or the color space transform node up here. Now let's go to effects. Let's close this and drag it so that we have a little bit more space. So what is color space transform? So CinePrint is designed to work with any camera and there's many cameras out there with many different styles of color because no two cameras have the same color science. So what CST does, it tries to standardize everything and convert your camera's colors to a standard 
color space. And so for my camera and probably most cameras out there, I just have nothing really special going on with the colors on my camera. So it's the standard Rec. 709. And most likely if you are new to filmmaking, new to DaVinci, chances are your camera is also shot in Rec. 709. If you're an Apple user, then I recommend you going to Rec. 709. A, I don't know why that is, but that's just a Apple way of doing things. Next, you want to look into the white balance and exposure of making sure that the white balance is properly set. The exposure, the footage is properly exposed. Right here, as you can see, the white balance is quite nice. I made sure to fix almost everything in camera before putting it into the video so the white balance is set. But when I apply in CinePrint, the exposure is a little bit too much. So how do I fix that? Within the camera exposure node, I just want to go to the offset wheel over here under the color wheels and just really drag down that until I get a nice exposure. So around for this footage, this clip is around 27, but it will change depending on your footage as well. So that, that already is looking great. But then if you look closely over here, the orange glow around the highlights is a little bit harsh. The halation is a little bit out of control. Let's tone that down a little bit. Next, we want to go to this halation node. As you can see here, this halation node looks like it's been grouped. And Da Vinci calls it a compound node. A compound node is a collection of a bunch of nodes that's grouped together to be a little bit more organized. So let's access the nodes inside the Halation Compound node. Right click on it and press on Show Compound node and it'll open up the group in a window. Now in order to reduce the blur that you see here, just go to this plus blur node, go to the blur tab for here and reduce the radius to the blur to your heart's content. I, for this footage, I'm thinking around like 55. That looks about right. It looks a little bit natural. It's there, but it's not too overbearing, which is great. Let's close, exit out of this compound node and zoom out. Already the footage is looking great. I don't need to modify the contrast because I quite like the contrast and I already quite like the saturation to begin with. So I can start now diving into the creative stuff, the actual cooking. The nodes that you want to pay the most attention to, obviously the blur, if you want to take the harshness out of digital video, grain, because we love film grain, and also these nodes over here that really try to give you different types of flavor in the color. Honestly, this is all personal preference, so try to toggle them on and off using Control or Command D, depending on what system you're on, and see which ones you like the most. Finally, with the secret sauce, the secret sauce is the film emulation stock that Tom Bowles uses. Within CinePrint, he gives you two options, the Cineon print and the print film. And so you could toggle between these two options over here. And as you can see, that gives you a slightly different type of filmic look. For most of my shots, I personally prefer Cineon, but it's honestly for self-reference. And just play around and see which one you like the best. And finally, there's some options to add a little bit of extra contrast at the end, or make the footage a little bit warmer. And so, for me, I'm quite happy with this look. Uh, again, it's not very advanced or anything. It's just a really simple way to achieve a pretty nice looking look straight out of the bat. But in terms of practicality, if I want to edit this across all my videos, across all my clips, I don't want to have to deal with all these nodes hanging out out of the open. I want to make it a little bit more organized. So if you look back to the halation node with the combat node, I'm going to do the exact same thing and actually put all of this in a combat node itself. That way it's a little bit more tidy and easy to modify when I copy and paste it across the rest of the clips in the video. So what you're going to do here is just select all the clips like so, right click on any one of them, go to the bottom and create a compound node. 
This will now group the entirety of CineFrit into one compound node, making it a little bit clean and easier to use. I like to then put a node before it, just so that I can make any adjustments to the original footage. Again, remember chronological, this node one over here is affecting the original footage before CineFrit. And if I want to do anything after CineFrit, then I can add another node. Ooh, not this one over here. I can add another node after CineFrit. And any adjustments I make to node 3 will affect the image that has already been applied with CineFrit. Now, how do we then save this as a template? Well, what you want to do is open the gallery tab and then head to the power grade sidebar menu item. If you don't have one already or if you want to make a new one, just right click and then you can add a power grade album. It will show no stills created if you don't have any stills. But what you're going to do then is if you want to save this look as a template that you can use for other clips and videos, all you need to do is just right click anywhere on the clip and grab a still. And as you can see here, it's been saved. And now when you go to another clip, say this clip of the ski lifts, let me reset the grade. All I need to do is then go to the still over here and then right click and apply grade. And it just copy paste the grade exactly as it is onto it as well. And then I can make the necessary adjustments. Maybe I think this is a little bit too bright. So I'm going to like lower it. I need a little bit more contrast, a little bit more punch. So maybe I give it like a little bit of an S curve here. So there's the before and here's the after, but then there's the cine print as well. Also, the beauty of having compound nodes is that if you go to the key tab over here, you actually dial back or even punch the amount of cine print you have. So maybe if I think the cine print is a little bit too strong here, the sauce. There's a little bit too much sauce. I can actually dial it back using the slider over here to give the right amount of print. So yeah, that was a very simple overview of how do you use CinePrint to make your video footage look like film. If you have any questions, any suggestions, please do leave it down in the comments. I try to reply to every single one of them, but also my Instagram DMs are open if you have any very specific questions you want to ask as well. And as always, take care and I hope you have a nice day. Thank you.